Canon Films was a company run by two Israelis, Menachem Golan and Yoram Globus, and they were the Steven Spielbergs and George Lucas combined of Israel in the 60s. If you look at the top 20 films in Israel, they had 18 of them with their names on it. They thought they could replicate that success in the States, so they went over to America and tried to take on the Hollywood studio system by making the craziest films you can possibly imagine now looking back in retrospect. They introduced ninjas to the big screen. They brought Charles Bronson into the mix, made a whole lot of Death Wish films. They made breakdance movies. They made Lambada movies. They made any kind of film under the sun that they could pre-sell. Canon survived because in the in late 70s and early 80s, the major studios had locked out a lot of independent distributors. They couldn't get their hands on American-style films in foreign territories. So these Canon guys said, OK, we'll make kind of American films that seem like American films and we'll sell them to these territories and they'll buy them. And that's what they did. They made films under five million bucks, sold them into profit and had some kind of, well, they just kept on making films. They made film after film after film. And the way they pre-sold these films was on Hollywood stars who were a little bit past their prime, like Chuck, like um, Charles Bronson, on Hollywood stars on the rise, like... Chuck Norris and Michael Dudikoff, and on genuine Hollywood stars uh, at the time like Bo Derek, who was, you know, a 10, the biggest sex symbol in the world. And they made lots of action films. They made lots of uh, adult kind of softcore films. They made teen movies. They, they made... Their slate was so diverse. You know, as we said, they could be making a ninja film one day, a breakdance movie the next day, and then a totally impenetrable art house film the next day. And all three of those posters would be featured side by side in variety. There are three ridiculous canon films, all for different reasons. The, the, the one, the film that we should all get on our hands and knees and thank God that canon existed because they got to make it was Life Force, a big budget Toby Hooper movie where every single cent was on the screen. They shot 70 mil. And ultimately, it is a zombie, end-of-the-world, vampire, nudie film. And um, I saw it at a very impressionable age in the cinema, and that experience has never been equaled since. So that's one. The second one is Death Wish 3, which is just batch crazy, which is Charles Bronson in hyperdrive decimating packs of bad guys, a, 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 a tidal wave of bad guys that come flowing towards him. And the third one is, um, is uh, Ninja 3, The Domination, which is a female ninja possessed, female, a female aerobics instructor possessed by the spirit of a dead ninja movie. Not many people can say they've made those. These films were playing in theatres. I mean, now... There's no way anyone in their right mind would put one of these films in a cinema. Uh, it was prior to, you know, the, the, the home video explosion. And um, they rode the wave. And uh, their legacy kind of does continue in a way with films like The Expendables and so forth. The guys who made The Expendables movies are all ex-canon staff members. And obviously there's a bit of canon DNA in those films. And as they say, they, they learnt what not to do. And here are films very much like the Canon films, but are actually finding very, very big audiences. After this documentary, a lot of people have said that we are so keen now just to track down these films. Um, you know, I'm glad I'm not in their shoes because it can only lead to disappointment. A large part of the time. When most people hear the word documentary, they think serious soul-searching study. And, uh, you know, we never let... Uh, information get in the way of entertainment and I hopefully it, it plays gangbusters.